Hey everybody, how are you all doing out there in YouTube land? Stamps Who Creates here to share with you another fun video and you're like, oh, where have you been? Well, this is Christmas week, so I want to wish all of you out there a happy holiday season. Be safe, you know, social distance, wear your masks, you know, the whole nine yards. We all heard about that before, right? But, um... It's been a while, right? I'm just uploading a video now that I'm doing of an unboxing of the bathing garden. So, you know, go ahead and check that one out. So while that's uploading, I thought, you know what, let's do a video. So as the title says, well, when I'm done with this, I will title it. Toilet paper. Right. Toilet paper. Yes. Can you embroider on toilet paper? The answer to that is yes. Let me show you. So I have a friend, a close friend at work. We've worked together now um, for the past 21 years. She is retiring. So hats off to you, um, Colleen. I wish you lots of luck in your retirement. And of course, everybody at work knows I stamp, I make cards, I do paper craft, I sew, and I do machine embroidery. So I can't let her leave the office without having something embroidered. And why not something really fun and unique? Toilet paper. So this is her official retirement papers. And yeah, it's a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe my mind is a little crazy. But you know what? It, it's 2020. So let's just get crazy and end it this way. So when I saw this idea, I thought, no way. You can't do this. Well, my second try. Here we are. We can do it. So I want to show you the steps in doing this. So I know we've embroidered so many things here on this channel, right? So why not? And this is actually Scott toilet paper. Um, I actually found out my cousin is going to be retiring in March. So, you know, I think he's going to need one of these too. So Scott toilet paper. I mean, I don't really think it matters what kind of toilet paper you use, but this is what I use, um, Scott, nothing fancy. Um, you can try the quilted ones, all that kind of stuff. I don't really think that that's going to matter. Um, so, um, hardest part, let's find the end of this. Okay. So here's our end. I'm going to switch you down. Um, well, actually I'm going to turn you down because I don't have all that fancy equipment like everybody has. And I want to show you how to, um, load this because you want to definitely, some people hoop it. Um, I did it with floating. I don't know. Should we try hooping at this time? I just thought floating was so much easier. But um, let me put this down. And um, if you get sick with me moving you around, close your eyes and I'll tell you when to open them. Okay? All right. So let me bring you over. Oh, there's so much stuff in this craft room. Because it has been a creative, creative. Sorry about all the moving again. Um, a creative, creative um, holiday this year. I'm very excited. All right. So now the um, design I purchased through Etsy. I don't have the designer's name. Just go, you know, wherever you buy your designs from, or maybe you make them yourself. Maybe you're, you know, into digitizing. I'm not. Um, and just search toilet paper, you know, depending on what you want. This was, I was looking for retirement. So I have a five by seven frame. And um, I have cutaway stabilizer. I found that to be very important, um, the stabilizing. So I'm going to just do my, um, let me see if I can put you down a little more. Just do my regular hooping of stabilizer. And normally I would do this on my other desk, which I probably should. Um, so put your stabilizer in your hoop. Now, if you want to float this or if you want to hoop it, totally up to you. It'll work either way. This is what I'm going to choose to do. Okay, nice, right? So now we're going to take our toilet paper. Now we want it to go this way because we're going to end up wrapping it around. And um, we're going to take off a little bit. And here's the best part of doing something like this is if it doesn't work out, just tear it off and do another one, right? Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to um, layer this up a little bit, okay? So um, I'm going to, I want to leave some on my end so I could wrap it around. And I want to align up my paper. 
so that, you know, the ends kind of, you know, look good. And then make sure I'm doing it the right way. So um, my paper is going to go like this. So I made like four, did I do four layers, three layers, four layers, something like that. Let me move this over here and um, put my paper on here. Let me fix this and then I'll, I'll show you. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of layering, leave myself a little bit of a tail on the end and put my roll like that. Okay. And now close your eyes again while I move you over to the embroidery area. Try to do this as seamless as possible, but it doesn't always work that way. Okay. Let me see if I could get you guys as close as I can. So sorry. One of these days, I'll get one of those newfangled cameras. Okay, so right now I'm using my phone. So I'm going to slide my hoop in. Now I have white bobbin thread. And I'm going to do this in black. So here's my toilet paper. Here it is coming off the roll. And I have three layers. That should be okay. Three layers. And I'm going to leave like i said a little bit of a tail off there trying to make sure that um this is the hardest part is to align it all up to make sure it's in like about the center of the hoop you know we could adjust that that's no worries all right so my little tail here with it folded over here's my roll here again it's toilet paper so you know Okay, all right, so let's set that there for right now. Now let's go over to our design. Make sure you could see. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is, now this um, speed on, this is a Brother Inovis Essence VE2300. The speed on this is fast. So this is toilet paper. So we want to first adjust our speed. So we're gonna go into here, into our menu. And we're going to go through here. Um, let's put uh, the light. Let me move the light down a little bit darker. So hopefully that that, let's check it out. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see that better. Um, we're going to go down to service count. Oh my gosh, I'm at 1 million already. Ugh. Fred told me that I need a commercial machine. Well, I'm saving for that. Okay, so max embroidery speed. So we're at 1,050. We want to go down. Let's see how much it goes. Oh, it does. It goes down to 350. So we're going to go down to 600 stitches per minute because we don't want it to go super fast. We want it, it's, you know, well, we don't want it to go super, super slow either. So, um, so yeah, but you see all the different adjustments you can make. Um, embroidery tension. I never touched that embroidery foot height. I never touch any of that, but these are, this is where you would go in, um, and do all of your different adjustments and whatnot. Okay. So I'm going to close that. Okay. So we're good. Our speed has been closed down, uh, moved down to a little bit lesser. I hope this is, this is better for you. Cause I know the one video I did, it was kind of washed out and with the white on white. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to find where is this going to stitch, right? So on the screen here, I think you could see, there's this little symbol here with the little dashes. That's going to show you where it's going to go on the screen. So when you hit that, and um, this is where you, uh, whoop, there goes my toilet paper. All right. Let me get that. Okay, now I have to fix this because it knocked my toilet paper roll and knocked me out of alignment with my toilet paper. All right, let me refix this. All right. Now, I don't know if I'm going to, um, I don't do all that fangled when I'm doing my videos, all that fancy editing and whatnot. So I don't know if I want to do this whole thing. It's a 17 minutes. What I'm going to, um, would I have enough stuff to chat about? I don't know. All right, let me try this again. Give yourself enough toilet paper so that when your hoop moves around like that, you know, you're good. Okay, I can see I'm a little too, um, 
too low. I need to move it up. All right, let me move you over here so you can see what all is going on. Okay, so I want the center to go up a little bit. And that looks pretty straight. So we're going to hit that button again. Okay, down here. I think I have to go up a little higher. Yep. And I'm thinking this would probably fit in a 4x4 four four hoop. I'm not certain, but I'm thinking it would. But um, I'm just using my 5x7. All right. Now, if you want to, if you don't want it to go through the whole thing, you can just hit... Um, this button and that will take you to the left hand corner so you can just hit those and let me go up to the top okay so now I can adjust because this actually fits like perfectly perfectly aligned in the paper so let me go back down to the bottom okay so it's a little bit of fussy fussy here but that's okay you know, that's all right. All right, that looks good. All right, so let me go to um, to the whole thing there, there. All right, let's go to the center. One more time. stands up because for some reason I'm thinking it's a little crooked so this is the important part is to get it all hooped up or floated whatever your choice may be okay I think that's going to be good I think that's good so we're going to close this out now another word of caution make sure your bobbin is full I'm using black embroidery thread and um, I just changed my needle, but definitely have a new needle for this. So this is a 17 minute stitch. All right. And there's no changing the thread unless you want to. So um, keep an eye on it. You know, definitely keep your eye on it. And um, you know what we can probably do to make it quicker? Instead of doing those these fancy designs top and bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just do the script writing on it, okay? So, um, let's do that. Oh, it's not going to let me do that? Oh, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. All right. No, because it's all one file. Okay, so it won't let me do that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, here we go. Mm, that looks a little high on that. Okay. So this is 17 minutes. And this is going to embroider on our toilet paper and we're doing it in the floating method. So I think we're gonna be good. And um, keep a close eye on it. You know, like I said, it is just toilet paper, but we did a couple layers and we have our um, stabilizer there. So if you're a little nervous, you know, um, just keep an eye on it. I was very nervous the first time. I thought, oh, I don't know. My first thought was, am I going to ruin my machine? Is my machine going to, you know, kaputi or out? You know, I'm at one million stitches, so, you know. But, um, yeah. So if this one turns out, I'm going to wrap this up for my cousin who's going to be retiring and then I'll have his gift. <laughs> Part of his gift. A little retirement funny. You know, it's 2020, so the whole toilet paper craze, you know, you know what I'm talking about, because we all know. And I just thought that this was super fun, you know, to show retirement papers, and it's a roll toilet and you know what? If she ends up where, you know, things get crazy again, she can always just tear this off and use the roll. 
it's just fun. You know, like life's too short. You know what I'm saying? Life's too short to be serious all the time. So you got to make it fun. But I'm going to tell you, you do a search for um, toilet paper, machine embroidery toilet paper. You will find a ton, ton of different types of designs that people have come up with and sayings and, you know, of course, the icon of the poop and the whole thing. But, you know, maybe you think I'm a little crazy and I've really fallen off my rocker, but I'm going to tell you, this is going to be the hit of the office. People are going to want these, you know, what a great little gift. You know, start your own, you know, toilet paper business, you know. <laughs> um, it's just fun. So anyhow, um, yeah, well, let's just go ahead. Let's have a little chat. If you don't like my chats, you know, you can fast forward through and um, I'm okay with that. But if you like, you know, a little chit chat, you know, stick around. All right. So there's the top design. So now we're going to start um, with the, the words. And this is the part that made me nervous. Oh, I'm nervous because there's so many stitches that go over the words to make it so nice, you know. So anyhow, um, it is Christmas week. Um, I am um, pretty much on track. I just have to bag up my items. I sat last night, you know, I do paper crafting. And I have all this... Um, well, what you would call scrapbook paper. In Stampin' Up! Land, it's called designer series paper, but it's scrapbook paper, 12 by 12. And I've been making my own bags, you know. Um, I only have two grandchildren, which I'm very happy with that. And um, pretty much, you know, I make little gifts for everybody, all the adults, but the grandchildren, you know, you buy them their toys and whatnot. And this year, I decided, you know, I'm not going to stress out with, you know, all sorts of things. My daughter set up an Amazon um, link with the things that they wanted. So I ordered those and Amazon delivered. And um, everyone else, I mean, I'm just giving everyone cash. Um, I'm not even going to bother with gift cards. Because the way our, you know, our world is these days, you don't even know if those businesses are going to be around. So cash, you can use that anywhere. And I'm um, not going to write checks. No checks, just cash. So I made a lot of cute little gifts. Um, some of them I probably should have videoed. Um, made my grandson's really cute fleece hats. Oh my gosh. Well, the one, um, the, my old, the older grandson, he's nine. So, of course, he would, he's too cool for the, the little hat peekers, which is the little embroidery on the, the front of the hat. Um, so, I made his plain, but I'll tell you, I got started on making them, and you have to sew them, and then you do the embroidery on them, and with applique. They were so fun to make. I don't know, I must have made like eight of them or nine or ten. I don't even know how many. I just kept going. I have a ton of fleece and um, didn't go out and buy anything different. I have fabric, I have fleece, you know, I have it all. And um, I hope they're going to like them. And then I made some pillow coverings and some spark boas. All that was just sewn. Now the pillows, I did um, embroidery on those. So, and sewed some other pillows, and um, I don't know about you, but I just think um, commercial things are nice, but when you make something and you put love in every stitch, it just means so much more than um, a commercial gift. And then, you know, hey, after I'm gone, you know, those that receive my gifts, hopefully they bring them out every year, and, you know, they think about me and my crazy life with my embroidering and sewing and crafting and it just brings me happiness to to make things for people and i think that the happiest part of the whole thing is giving a handmade gift and just seeing like you made this you know it just gives you a boost and i'm telling you in the way the world is these days we need a boost right so here we go we did official we made it and now we're working on the word retirement this is just so fun isn't it and you know, I mean, really, you can make these dirt cheap, I'm telling you. Like, you know, you could splurge and go with a little bit more fancy or toilet paper if you want, but um, 
it definitely helps to have a brand new needle so that's not stagging. The first time I tried it, that's what happened. I didn't have a new needle and um, it got stuck and tore and got caught and it's a big bird's nest underneath in the um, bobbin area and I was just like, oh, I'm gonna try this because I'm determined when I see something and I wanna make it, I don't know how you are, but I'm just determined I'm gonna do it. So I did and I was like so thrilled with myself that I did. And I can't wait to give it to her. Not till next week. But um, I can't wait. Can't wait. Cause she's. I think she's going to get a kick out of it. I really do. I think this is super fun. So let's see. What else have I been doing? Um, I finished up my baking. Now, I love to bake. Um, I really do. <laughs> this year, excuse me. With the whole thing that's going on. Let me get a little, grab a little drink. Hold on. little coffee here. It's probably iced coffee by now. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put that near mine for Okay. With the whole COVID thing this year, my heart just isn't in Christmas. I don't know how you guys are. I'm just not into it. So I wanted to bake, but everything's so expensive. And going to the store, I've been doing like the order online and pull up and, and get it and well that's a whole other story walmart ordering food going to pick up your groceries that is a downer for me never doing that again whole other story but one day i did it I was supposed to pick it up between four and five i was there it had snowed that day who knew it was gonna snow nobody they said flurries dusting mm -hmm. ended up inches so I went to pick it up. Apparently, people that were supposed to be doing that part of the grocery shopping, no one showed up. Well, they didn't tell us that when we pulled in. I waited in my car for over an hour. Over an hour. And the guy kept coming out, what's your name? And then uh, there was like 40 minutes that nobody was even coming out with anything. And then they came out and gave us all $10 gift cards, apologizing. But by that time, the 5 o'clock people were coming. They told me to go get something to eat. And come back uh yeah i left all right but i didn't go back canceled my order next day went online did weiss weiss groceries i don't know if you have that in your area we have that here pleasant online wonderful experience i could have picked any time that day walmart i had to wait like two days to get my stuff because there was no openings and then never got it anyhow so with everything, I'll go back to my story now. I know I venture off, I apologize. So with having to go and buy all the ingredients for all the baking, I mean, everything's so expensive, it's horrible. I decided QVC had David's cookies and they are frozen, already made. And you just have to literally take them out of the bag, put them on your tray, bake them and you're done. Now it was $50 and you might go, oh, but take into account eggs, flour, sugar, butter, chocolate morsels, brown sugar, da 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 da. I think I got a bargain. So I made them yesterday. Oh, I know, I baked all day. 350 degrees, it was like uh, 17 minutes. They were all 350. So you got a hundred, was it 120 some cookies? I didn't even make all of them because it was way too much. There was pecan ones, pecan ball things. I don't know what they are. They are delicious. You didn't get a lot of those. Um, there was chocolate chip where you got a ton. There was um, like a sugar cookie with sprinkles in it. There was hot cocoa cookies. Was there four different kinds? Did I say four? I think that was it. And then I did make cutouts. Um, I do like making those, and I found a new recipe, and they came out amazing. And I just buy the the icing in the tube, you know, to decorate. They came out so cute. So we have five different kind of cookies. The day when it snowed last week and everything was shut down and my work was shut down, I made, um, I buy the official retirement. Look at that. We're already done with that. Now we're on to papers. Um, 
I did, um, I bought the almond bark. It's called almond bark. It's chocolate or you can get vanilla. And it's just flavored. So it's not real chocolate. It's flavored. Um, and I bought um, from the dollar store um, peanut butter crackers. I bought um, these long rolled cookie things. I bought the um, pretzels, chips. I made popcorn in the microwave. What else did I do? Uh, the sugar wafers and I melt it all in my, um, I have a small little crock pot, real teeny one, and it fit in there nice. I put it on high and then I turn it down to low. It keeps the temperature of the, quote, chocolate at a stable condition. And you just dip all your little items in there, put them on a tray with wax paper and let them, you know, harden up, sprinkled on some of them and um, they came out nice. So all that stuff that I make, um, I package it all up and I give it away as gifts. And people love it. Well, it's family that I'm getting it to. Family. Especially this time of the year. You know, with this going on this year. Um, people love it. You know, well, my family loves it. You know, I make things that maybe they didn't. And, and my daughter, when I showed her the cookies, you know, the QVC faux cookies, she was like, they look so perfect. And they really did. And I still have cookies in my freezer. So they came... Um, I think I picked the shipment that was like the 16th of December. They came on Saturday um, and they were fine. They had apparently dry ice, but when I opened the box, there was no dry ice. But they were frozen because it's cold here in Pennsylvania. And they came Saturday, so I was home. So I was able to go out and get the box from the porch and throw it in my freezer. And yeah, so I baked. <laughs> So I think I'm just about ready for um, Christmas. Uh, Christmas Eve this year, we're going to my son's house, and um, I'm Polish descent. So normally, you know, when my grandmother was alive, you know, they had the so many soups, so many fishes, you know, pierogies, like no meat. After my grandmother passed, well then, you know, we kind of added ham to the menu. <laughs> then. You know, my mom passed, it'll be two years. Oh gosh, this is such a hard time for me because she passed away on January 5th. And Christmas was her favorite, absolute favorite holiday. And I kind of, I get sad. You know, I, I sat here last night with tears flowing down my face thinking of it. And I don't want to go back talking about that because I don't want to start crying. Um, but my son's doing Christmas Eve and we are really going off the fly this year. And he's making prime rib. Mm -hmm. Now Christmas Day, um, I usually, the past couple years I've gone to my cousins, <clears throat> but you know, my aunt, uh, which is my mom's sister, she's the only one left now because my uncle passed away a few months ago, it was very sad and sudden. Um, they live outside Philadelphia and um, we don't really see them too much for the holidays. They used to come in and see my mom um, after Christmas and um, so... Um, Christmas Day, um, we decided we're going to go down. Well, we kind of invited ourselves to my daughter's, who lives about an hour away from where I live. So my son, his girlfriend, and me, myself, we're going to go there Christmas Day. We'll get to see what the kids got from Santa, and we're going to have a, like a breakfast. But it's going to be like a lunchtime, but breakfast. So that'll be fun, and being that Christmas this year... You know, there's the whole weekend. Christmas is a Friday. Um, so then we still have the whole weekend. So it'll be nice. It'll be nice. So what do you guys do for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day? In the past, Christmas Eve was always time that the kids spent with me. And then Christmas Day with their father. And, um, well, this year, you know, every year it changes. You just never know. You know what's going to happen. But um, last year, um, their father ended up going to my son's, and that's when I left. And they did their little exchange then. I don't know. Maybe they're doing that this year. I don't really know what they're going to do. But um, that's what I'm doing. So, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping to start doing more videos. Um, I know I kind of was a little bit uh, distant there for a while. But with the holidays, I was just so busy and trying to work full time, run my Stampin' Up! business, do the embroidery, um, Christmas things, you know, it's a little hectic. 
Oh, I am so excited about this. Oh my dog, Aurora. So yeah, I'm looking to do more videos, more things for you. Um, it seems like there are a lot of people out there that are looking for help with their machines. Now, a lot of you are uh, watching older videos of mine. The um, first machine that I ever got, which is a small 4x4 one. And there seems to be a lot of interest in that machine. I almost wish I didn't trade it in, but I kept it because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, it's a very affordable machine. The brother, I think it was a, was it a PE535, my first machine? But oh my gosh, embroidering is so much fun. It's so satisfying. It's quick, um, fabulous gifts, things you cannot buy. We we're almost done. Ooh, look at that. Did I really chit chat for 17 minutes? Good heavens. Listen. I, I love this screen. I, got, I just got to show you it. I mean, this is worth the money. Just to see that little smiley face. It's finished sewing. Oops, sorry. Hit OK. And it goes back to beginning. So if you wanted to do it again, you're good to go. All right. So here we are. Um, let me be careful here. Because again, this is TP. So there it is. Official retirement papers. I hope this isn't backwards. So I'm going to unhoop this. And... Um, get this off the hoop oh my goodness okay okay so it's off the hoop and we have this paper all you're going to do is take your scissors and um, you're going to trim this away being careful not to cut your toilet paper so I'm just going to take my scissors, I'm going to peel this back a little bit, and it's white on white, so you won't see it. I don't want to pull that. I'm just going to peel it back a little bit. Let me take this closer to me so I can see. After all that, you don't want to ruin it, right? Okay. Let me trim. I'm going to trim a little bit closer. I'm going to fold this down a little bit because I don't want all of that there. Let's trim this off. Now, worst case scenario, if it tears, don't worry about it. Just use a little piece of tape and wrap it around the roll. Because I'm going to use a little piece of tape to... Um, so I'm just carefully rolling this back on the roll like that. And just like this. And let me see, where's my tape? Hmm. I do have tape somewhere. I'm just so, you know, putting things back and then, well, I have to look for my tape. I'm looking quickly, I don't see it. But anyhow, you would just take, you know, a little bit of scotch tape. Now, if this little piece is sticking up, just tuck it in there. Nobody's gonna worry about that. And wrap that around here. Put yourself some tape on here to hold it and um, put it in a package and put that there like this. And I did a little bit of the Stampin' Up! ribbon. You can see it. Let me put you back to me where, where I can talk to you. Like you didn't hear enough talk. Sorry about that light. There we go. Hi. Um, so yeah, just put, a put it in a little baggie. Tie it with some ribbon, and you guys, 
excuse me, such a cute little gift. My goodness. So here we are. Embroidering on toilet paper. You betcha. Life is good, right? Let me take them and hold them both up to show you. See that? Very cute, right? All right. So I hope this um, inspires you to go ahead out, grab, you know, who knows what. You just never know what you can embroider. So thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate you being here. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. That helps me to continue to make more and more videos for you. And um, I want to wish you all a happy holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. And a very happy new year. And I'm looking forward to the upcoming new year and lots and lots of more fun videos with who knows what, right? All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a great day. We'll see you back here again real soon. Bye for now.